the league going down there is perfect because you're giant head and torso blocks it most of the time. Why did you move it from there? Because the tape fell off it and the tape wouldn't go back on. And I have the power. What's your best power, Sanch? Welcome back to Seekus San, where we take a trip down memory lane for some reason. We were just talking about this recently, about where we used to get source information. So if anyone has been involved in the industry or this kind of the fitness industry or strength training or any kind of stuff, more than the last kind of like 10 or more years, um, you'll remember a lot of these. For a lot of you though, if you're not involved, if you only come into the last three or four years, a lot of these will mean nothing to you, but for the people who it does, this will, this will, um, this will ring some bells and tell you how shit it was ten years ago. Yeah, and I mean shit. So what we're talking about today is where you got information from years ago. Like so, when we started training for like 14, 16, 17, trying to glean information from places, trying to find things out. Most of the time, whatever sport, like. For me, I just wanted to find out more about strength training, more about sprint training, more about how you're supposed to get better at your sport. And then as I got into weightlifting, obviously trying to find out more and more about weightlifting and trying to, you kind of have these little moments of realization where you're like, oh, this thing I thought to be true is actually complete bollocks. And you'll find that the further into this information you got, the more and more of it was absolute, complete and utter bollocks. I'm actually going to say 95% of the stuff that was there 10 years ago was complete and utter bollocks. It was all, all of it was bollocks. Like, so much was just pure, just shit. Yeah. Like, I, it's, this isn't like a nostalgic trip down memory lane where, like, oh my God, this, the strength no. training, this isn't like Mark Ripple toe. Like, this isn't like, this isn't like something where we're like, these were so much better. Like, this was terrible like if you if you remember this you'll realize how lucky you are to get like good information these days from a lot of different people because these were so 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 shit i can't even begin to describe looking at it now and the funny thing is like the stuff i started off with which was like books Mm -hmm. that my mother would have brought home from work they ended up being so started with those Mm -hmm. then i like this intermediate years and nearly everything in those intermediate years was absolute tripe and then you end up just going back to the books in the end so it's like oh actual biology or oh periodization for sports yes you know like some of that early stuff was so hazy Mm -hmm. and just so wrong like just blatantly wrong and and they had no idea it was wrong so Garth where will we start off on the list of uh of old-timey Old timey information sources. I'd say the the biggest proprietor of bollocks was initially I think T Nation was probably the biggest. So yeah. they originally had a magazine, but that was gone by the time I was like fifteen, I would say. So maybe like twelve years ago, no more. And it was all on the website, and that was really the like the apex of websites making articles and people. We're talking millions of well, hundreds of thousands of people reading these articles of absolute tripe like these articles back then look like what ads try and make you click on now every single article and i read so many of them and they were all just like this new crystal from curcumin that'll make your testosterone go like five thousand percent more and they'd have just an incredible plethora of supplements for sale Mm. Uh, i don't even know if tea nation are really still a thing um but they were so much they don't, like so much bollocks. They don't, like I can remember there was sometimes there was legitimate people the odd time, like you'd someone like Dan John who the odd time would read would have written pretty solid stuff. He was really about simplifying stuff, but he also said stuff like, "You find your dose of fish oils by taking enough that you shit yourself, and then you take two less than that." That's yeah. the kind of so thing. You start with one, increase it one every day until you shit yourself. But shit yourself was like fifteen times. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was how people were like. That was like um, that was stuff on websites, Not like Teen Nation. That, and that was like the source. Like, yeah, yeah. It wasn't like there was loads of. It'd be the equivalent of people think of Teen Nation now as like oh it's just this kind of like underground blog. Mm-hmm. It's like no, Teen Nation was the equivalent of rt news or they cnn news, news yeah. for for you non-irish people you know it was like what you deem to be legitimate information it was also where you got like programs you know so i remember getting a, a copy of 531 off t nation oh sorry actually that no fairness yeah 5 g was the one of the best things that came out of t nation yeah so like 531 was up there 
I remember getting Smolov or like a screenshot of a Smolov program. Smolov Junior was up there. There was like the stuff on German volume training. Yes, there was. But the most disappointing thing, and we only figured this out today, is when you go to T Nation now, T Nation no longer looks like what it used to look like. So it used to be black screen, red titles, and then white writing in Times New Roman, or like something equivalent to Times New Roman. Mm -hmm. Incredibly edgy uh, graphics design on the website. And that's where you used to be reading like the, you need two liters of milk a day, or like a gallon of milk a day for your gaining phase. And it's, I don't think anyone really buys into that anymore. In terms of like reading no, just stuff of off people, one website. But loads of people not watching this would buy into this. Like loads of people going to commercial gyms. Yeah. Still get this information somewhere, but I don't know where they're getting it from. Uh, TikTok. I think it actually is TikTok is a Teen t- t- Nation. Five got yeah, Jim Wendler was probably the, was a good thing that came out of Teen Nation. He they really helped launch the five three one. And Dan John, in fairness, he's still pretty active on Instagram if you look at these things. And, and Dan John is like he's just solid reasonable information about S and C stuff, so I'll give props to them. But the other stuff, some of the things he used to write, f- fucking hell. Uh, on to the next one <laughs> was one I would phrase it frequently because Elite FDS had not great training information, but what they really had was what I used to really enjoy reading was their coaches had training logs, and their coaches used to train pretty hard. To be fair, like there a lot of them were retired powerlifters who used to do a shitload of training and it was just kind of interesting they used to write funny stories about stuff they used to have a lot of uh i never really went to the fts for information it was more like a weekly soap for me like, okay none of the stuff they put up was just kind of funny they were all they, they were characters you know yeah 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 the one thing i didn't really understand and it's about the next one which is like men's health because everyone is on gear and all the information they were talking about didn't matter if you were darn gear like it was just and i i was only 15 or 16 and i didn't yeah. really know i didn't when I got started weightlifting, I learned real fast. Like in the first month, I was like, oh shit, everyone's on gear. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But when yeah. it was um, this stuff, I didn't know. No. I remember the first time, like, so Elite FTS wasn't really a thing for me. I remember uh, Barbell Shrugged went to Elite FTS back years and years ago. This Barbell Shrugged was, even after all this. That, and that would like, the Elite FTS were like the old timers back then, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd never really... But it's funny you say about the magazines, like about men's health, and you look at the guys in those magazines. I remember it's when we were living in the States, and just like I was 13, and looking at this magazine, being like, Jesus, squats are crazy, you know? Like, mm-hmm. I had no real exposure to squats, but I knew what, like, strong adult athletes look like. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, oh my God, their squats are so big. And then you go to the back, and there's like ads for like squat suits and stuff, or there's yes. ads for like equipment just remember thinking like it was like somebody had opened the door and now suddenly humans were flying like yeah, yeah. it was so abstract to me i had no idea like a thousand pounds and then i convert back to kilos and i'm like i don't think there's even that many plates in the gym at home like yeah. literally i had never seen anything like that and that is like it leads us on nicely to the next one where it's like men's health and like traditional print magazines so they were when I started were still like I would have bought Men's Health and I remember like a ten, like it was like a tenner for a magazine kind of thing and just there was just again similar stuff to kind of Teen Nation but in a more soft core version yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. Teen Nation was like hardcore uh, I don't know if we can say the word uh, P-O-R-N and P-O-R-N but if that was the case then Men's Health was something that was like soft core stuff <laughs> like it was like no, My really macadamia was. nuts will um, make your workouts better or something. You know, just yeah. really like, not as like five times X testosterone booster stuff. It was kind of like, uh, everyone knows what mental health is like. And yeah. mental health are still going at the moment. They were involved in a Mark Ripetone's acting, but um, obviously hugely irrelevant again, and rightly so. Yeah. I, um, it's funny, just, like the, I definitely was into the men's health just I'd be so interested in the magazines well they were a hello magazine for men like yeah yeah that was exactly it and if you were like in town with your mother and you were like oh I'm gonna magazine that's the scenario I thought of yeah Yeah, and uh, it's like there's there's other equivalent to that like remember I was never into like 442 was a big soccer magazine but the lads used to read it and Mm -hmm. then the odd time you'd look at the articles in the back and people would be talking about like sprinting drills and stuff definitely like I think it was Rugby World that magazine they used to have some training stuff in it when you look back at it now, it probably wasn't terrible training stuff, 
mm-hmm. it was just very standard like bog standard but that that literally was what you were down to was like i want to get better at running yes so i'll like find that magazine that's probably thrown under my bed somewhere mm-hmm. sc- leaf through it and then you're looking at that and then you're trying to like say okay i should be training there's this many weeks away and like you know you're trying to come up with plans when you've no idea what's happening but the problem with them was like so they wouldn't give you they give you a wor- I workout a, a workout a yeah. single workout that it'll be like your arms workout so you just do that workout forever so there was never like they were selling programs they were just selling singular workouts that you would do like I remember Dan John for example in Teen Nation was like you do this one then you do this workout and then you do this workout and there was some form of progression yeah. to it and obviously 531 was was a big on like steady progression but most of them are just singular workouts like sprint workouts like you said or back and chest workouts or something stupid like with that I remember being like it's probably the year I finished under 16 so I would have been like 16 years old and for the summer you're like I'm going to do gym training this summer yeah. and then being like these are three different workouts I'm going to do and just genuinely thinking I'm so prepared now I'm just going to run these three workouts yeah that's and that's it yeah if someone came to me now and said that yeah like what but people still think like what that the though, fuck? Is, yeah 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 like a lot of times people come to us like oh what, like, how long do I do 5x5 five five for 5x3 five or whatever yeah yeah, or is uh, is it okay if I keep doing triples? Like, yeah, for two weeks, for two years. For, yeah, yeah. What are you talking about? Um, I next, actually sorry, go on. No, you go. Okay, so sorry. Next, I forgot. Originally, we made this. I'd completely forgotten about something that was instrumental to me not going down the wrong path. And my brother used to do strongman, and that's how I ended up starting strength training. And he, but he bought me a book by Ross Enemite called Infinite Intensity and he is Katie Taylor who is a phenomenal Irish boxer he is her boxing coach and the s and stuff in that was unbelievable it was so out of the ordinary of what else was going around at the time bar like obviously the books you'll talk about but for any of the other non-literature books non-physiology books his s and stuff was amazing it was all like work capacity it was literally like heavy wheelbarrow carries like do lots of pull-ups like there was actual programming it was laid out like templates of what programming might look like uh it was just sort of like dumbbell rows dumbbell presses dumbbell snatches uh kettlebell swings like really just if you were i remember i started doing that stuff while i was still playing gaily football and it made some difference yeah, my ability yeah, to yeah. like hammer people like it was so good because it was just real basic really basic what any work capacity gpp phase should look like now in strength training and that was like that was the only book I, i'd write you know and i was yeah. so, so lucky that i was the one that but obviously my brother knew a lot more than me at the time and he got me that book with good reason you know and uh like he's ross cena had a, a website ross training and it was really good stuff on there like he was all about just hard work infinite intensity is the perfect name for ross Enemite's book but you had to call stuff like that yeah back yeah then. It, sounds, buy it. it sounds so cringy now to say infinite intensity but you had to call it that back then yeah because no one had a niche like they do today no one has their their thing they're in everyone was just like general just training out there so it was either no one was a bodybuilder no no um, no Everyone wanted to be fitter, but some people wanted to do harder training, but I wasn't really sure what it was. Like, no, was everyone like, was doing bodybuilding training. Yeah. And then there was just different levels of intensity or how hard you pushed it during that. Like, everyone yeah. was doing bodybuilder training. Professional rugby players were bodybuilding. Yeah. Track athletes were bodybuilding. No. Bodybuilders were bodybuilding. It, like, everyone was bodybuilding back then. Yeah. But... Some people just wanted to push harder, or some people want to lift more weights, or something like. But they still trained like bodybuilders. Like that's what the the overarching premise was for everything of like, you're training muscles. Like mm-hmm. that's all it was. Um, definitely for me, books were probably the the biggest, the biggest source of information. Just purely because I was very very lucky. The bookshelf at home would have a lot of sports science books on it, and you just end up picking up like random pieces. Like there's a book still at home. And it's like periodized training for professional cycling. And you just, it's very beneficial to read that stuff when you're a small bit younger because you never really, when you see the dumber stuff, even though I still did all the really dumb stuff, you just don't pick up quite a lot of it. Even though if you ask lads who coach me, they'll definitely say you still did all the dumb stuff as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but they're, those books now are, and it's when we always get asked on live streams, people are like, where should I go? What's a good book for weightlifting? What's a good book for powerlifting? 
they're not the books you need to read. You don't need to read a Schmeg Schmeverit book on weightlifting. You don't need to read a Schmerting Schmerent book on powerlifting. I do not condone this behavior. You need to read a book on normal biology so you understand what biology is. You need to read a book on biochemistry to understand what biochemistry is. You might need to go back to very basic physics if you're starting to look into biomechanics, but that's the level of reading most people need to do. I'd say almost everyone needs to do. You don't need the, I was a powerlifter for 30 years and this is what I did. You just need to understand that this is what a human body is and this is how a human body adapts and this is the stimulus it needs for that adaptation. That's really what I would say on the, the book front of things is like, don't look for the specific book. Like, don't look, if you're a professional cyclist, you don't necessarily need to be looking at, or if you're a recreational cyclist, you don't need to look at strength and conditioning for professional cycling. You need to look at periodization in sport yeah. or whatever it is. The next one then after that, and it's as like the internet got way more popular and it, it was definitely like Gareth was talking earlier. Gareth didn't have internet very early. I certainly just didn't have real interest in the internet at any point until I was kind of forced to. Um, but forums were definitely a place where a lot of people started to share information. Uh, and it was very, very beneficial. Like Was it? In some cases, like the bodybuilding.com forum might have had a piece of useful information on it. Mm-hmm. But I, to be honest, I blame it for all of the crap we have now. Because it's like, oh, my opinion matters because I can comment on a forum. My opinion matters because I can comment on a video. Uh, Zach had a really fun thing in a story today. What? Where th- people are commenting on a video oh, of someone skiing, on a yes, skiing machine. They're, they're supposed to do it. They're supposed to do it. But anyway, this is when like more and more dumb idiots started thinking their experiences were important to other people. In terms of weightlifting... We had the Pendley forums. Now, I never commented on forums, but I sure enjoyed reading them. Yeah. Um, so the Pendley forum was, was something that was very, very popular. And it was essentially just what, like what bodybuilding.com would be if it was weightlifting.com in terms of forums. Like it was the same misinformation. Obviously, everyone there was an amateur or pretty terrible. Um, Glenn or any of those didn't really comment in there that much. There was also Mark Ripito's forum, Starting Strength, had some stuff, and Mark used to be kind of active on there. Um, but Penley was probably the, was the big one for weightlifting. Obviously, it was just a huge source of misinformation, or maybe not misinformation, non-information, if that's yeah. the word. Completely useless information would have been a huge one. Bodybuilding.com, the MISC session, with the MISC miscellaneous was yeah. very entertaining and slightly scary at times uh, in terms of weird things on the internet. It definitely was entertaining. Yes. Like you can't... Bodybuilding.com forum was edgy mm-hmm. at certain points. Like it used to be... Like you talked about some of the blogs and stuff being like soap operas. But yeah. some of the forum entries were definitely like... Someone would comment who was after talking shit three weeks ago on a different thread Mm -hmm. and then suddenly it would all kick off again you know it really was entertaining the next one then is probably like i was definitely in a bit of a gifted position of having like really good coaches that's undoubtedly where most of the good information and most of the crap information was thrown out um i just happened to have good strength conditioning people around me happened to have good weightlifting people around me when I got into weightlifting and that's something you cannot discount the the credibility of it like having really good coaches who are like still coaching Olympians now having those from when you're like 15 mm-hmm. is like unbelievable and we were laughing about it before this it's like I'm still in this terrible position <laughs> and and like not a good athlete but to be honest with me being a coach now that's like standing on the shoulders of or being heavily helped out by probably five to ten very very knowledgeable people who had a lot of experience and did a lot of reading themselves and did a lot of filtering through stuff and and kind of going through that non-information to try and pick out the important points and then noting their own experiences and passing it on so that really is something that was like unbelievably beneficial to me you know in, in both rugby in general weightlifting in general training and then like getting 
better at snatches and clean and jerks and coaching it I in the period of time when this was at its peak I had no access to any coaches so I've literally nothing to add to this I had no nobody there was nobody in Reddit you know no form of anyone who was formerly working in the industry was any way I had any way access to just flat out zero nothing it really is like opposite ends of the spectrum because yeah. in the sport Gareth was playing it's notorious like mm-hmm. back then it was notorious it's still kind of notorious now where yeah. like you don't bring outside people in mm-hmm. outside people won't help you need people from the town mm-hmm. and from the club and they'll help you and then rugby was like the complete opposite they wouldn't really want people from their own place uh, coming in as like experts you'd want people from outside and you'd hire people from outside um, and it's certainly better like lastly then we had blogs so blogs were a huge thing as a lot of people even if you weren't involved in fitness or strength conditioning or whatever you would have if you're still on the internet back then you would have remembered blogs were a huge thing so there was blogs like uh who had blogs so there was like chaos and pain there was like 70s big lifts run bang gray skull was a thing there was loads of these blogs there was um there was a gentleman who had some involved in the Chinese way of things. That was a little bit later, though. So that was like, uh, was it Lift Hard? Uh, so a lot of these blogs, like pre, pre, pre-way of thing time, I suppose, was um, was these blogs where people would just write. Because YouTube content and video content, and obviously there was no podcasting, so there was no form in, in that regard. People didn't really make vlogs in terms of, in relation to this industry. So you couldn't really follow anyone there. So basically where a lot of people would have put their experiences was in a blog format and it was just incredibly entertaining sometimes they would have talked about their training sometimes they talked about their it was just all very random stuff but there was a lot sometimes there was good information in these not a whole lot but there was a bit again it was a lot of people who I didn't realise were on gear and it wasn't even that they were disingenuous about being on gear it was clearly they were on gear and anyone who knew would have known but uh, they wouldn't have realised and so some of the information was a little bit kind of useless in that regards but Chaos and Pain was great because he used to just talk about kind of things like um, uh, just eating a lot of food to get bigger and stuff. Um, things like Ross Training had a blog and he used to talk about his own training and he did like an experiment where he gained a lot of weight. So blogs were some information, mostly in for t- entertainment is how I describe yeah. them. Did I did very, very little. Not that I didn't have interest in blogs. To be honest, I just don't think I knew blogs were out there. But there was no way you could have found these unless someone gave no. them, showed you where they were. I remember there was a few of the bigger CrossFit gyms in the States like with competitive athletes. Like Invictus used to have their blog mm-hmm. and they put up all their training they were doing currently. Yes. Which is class. If you're like an 18-year-old and you wanted to do CrossFit style train really hard and you get like the Invictus programming mm-hmm. that's put up for free. Yeah. And it's just like a week delayed from them. Like that is so valuable. I remember NorCal, like uh, Jason Cleavage, Jim used to it. That sort of stuff was legitimately, I don't know if it was like helpful, but it was very, very well received by me. Yeah, programming was something that was impossible to find is the overarching thing of this. Good programming and good advice was impossible to find. (laughs) It's not even weightlifting, but... Jesus, good programming around S&C, like periodization stuff. Nobody talked about it. Nobody was ever... And I got like, we trolled through a lot of the mainstream stuff. No one ever talked about periodization. No one ever talked about smart programming. No, I remember programs used to be like a plug-and-play thing, you know? And it's still kind of the same today where... Well, they were always, they were always like workouts. Yeah, and like I was looking at my old hard drive the other day from like this like three laptops ago. Mm-hmm. And it had this thing called short heavy cycle in it and I was like when is this so it's like years and years ago I obviously understood that I needed to get much stronger in a very short period of time but this was undoubtedly some American football players off season who was on a huge amount of gear yeah it was like you add 20% every session and you increase your volume as well and it's just like I can just imagine my 18 year old or 19 year old self if I still had memory from back then uh, trying to do this session in the gym and just dying every single time like I think that's literally why 531 took off so big because it was literally the only progressive program that you was out at the time that was in any way planned out and made sense and was workable for people who weren't on gear or who were on gear and you could do it and make progress it was literally like 
basically the only sensible program that had a little bit of nuance to it unlike every other program that was ever out then that was like templated otherwise and that's probably one of the reasons why it did so well I would say yeah the interesting thing with it as well is like Jim Wendler didn't train like that when he was a powerlifter no, no it was no. like after his retirement from professional powerlifting he mm. was like oh how am I gonna kind of stay strong and then he's like oh shit this really works yeah like a much more moderate approach uh, which is interesting like I wonder how much or if he would have been better in his competitive days if he uh if he had been doing slightly less deathly training. Well, he probably wouldn't work with like geared lifting or quick, yeah, quick yeah, powerlifting. Yeah. If you remember any of these or if you remember looking at any of these or if you've no idea what we're talking about, please let us know in the comments. We'll be very interested to hear if anyone knows what we're talking about. Uh, there has to be a lot of people out there, surely, because our age bracket is similar to ours who watch YouTube. Our demographic is, so you have to. Surely someone Yeah, is. definitely there is, because you mentioned Grayskull on a video a few weeks ago, and someone was like, oh my God, I haven't heard Grayskull in, in so long. Yeah, there was like Grayskull conditioning. I think, the, I think they only did conditioning. So that was during the period where it was just like warrior training. So like yeah. my initial training period is like from Ross training was just, it was basically GPP all year round. Yeah. yeah. Which ironically worked very well, I suppose, for before weightlifting in some ways. Like, there was no, like, compound lifts. It was just, like, rows, pulls, sledgehammer, like, random shit like that. Sandbag stuff, you know? And they were, like, what you consider CrossFit workouts as well. Like, I don't know, because I've thought about this before. MMA training videos used to be so popular with, like, a few of the lads that I would train with. Mm -hmm. And, like, especially the rugby lads, you'd be like, oh, do you see Vanderlei Silva doing this? And he'd have a snorkel on. He'd have his nose taped yeah, over. Taped over yeah. And he'd be smashing a tire with a, a sledgehammer. Then doing like max sprints on a treadmill. Then burpees. And he'd be doing that in like a circuit. They were so popular. And I don't know if that was only because they were the only videos we had access to. Or if it was like you're a 16 year old young fella who really wants to like prove himself. Joe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to be the tough guy. So no, is, I enjoy training hard. Like, yeah. I enjoy training like a dumbass. Yeah. Thanks for watching. <laughs>